We are on the air. Greetings and welcome back once again. Oh, now we're live. Greetings and welcome back once again. This is Imuna Yisrael. Solonomics 101, Lev Project, getting back into the swing of things. Been off air for a couple of weeks, probably about, you know, I've been here and there, but not, not in, in my usual way. So I want to thank everybody for joining us and for those who have said they missed us yesterday was kind of like my little welcome back and so i shared some things and it was a good day to um begin speaking and sharing again as it related to what did it relate to it related to the international day of awareness um and remembrance of the slave trade and the abolition thereof very interesting stuff uh if you missed that video go ahead and check it out you know let me, oh, wait a minute. I got to do one thing. I'm a little bit out of practice. I'll be trying to, uh, this is, this is, I, I told you guys yesterday I shared. So this is what I finished today. So I'm going to try to incorporate that, make it, you know, instead of just only looking at me, you can aesthetically look at uh, some of the creations here that I'm using to um, do my entrepreneurship as usual. In addition to books, I'm an artist, I'm a musician. And now you know a little another secret of Amuna. I like clothing and sewing and all of that nice good juicy stuff and so all of the links are in the box let me make sure that i can see you today we have a treat we're going to take a little break from mr john blackwell uh you know he it, it's, it's long and it's very um monotonous his conversation <laughs> and i'm like okay john blackwell you are putting me to sleep and so i'm i've tried to get through it i tried to get through it i'm gonna need some help so you guys you know Definitely help me if anybody would like to read as we continue through that. Uh, that is always open and on the table because this project is for us collectively. This is episode 91 of The Left Project. And we have a little treat today because as I was listening over the link, I actually shared it yesterday about Haiti's condition because it was marked that, sorry, I'm trying to, I'm trying to stop these crazy YouTube videos from uh, doing what they do. One second, and it's still doing what it does. So basically, Haiti's okay. condition. Come on, because now, it was marked that. Sorry, I'm trying to. <laughs> I'm trying to stop these crazy YouTube videos. The YouTube is bugging out now. I'm trying to make. Second, and it's still doing what it does. There we go. Finally, okay, that's better. Okay, now, so where was I? Yeah, so they were talking about Haiti, and I shared a video of why Haiti is so poor. Um, it's an excellent documentary slash lecture. Uh, for the for the uh, history of Haiti and what has happened. And a lot of people are unaware, like I said yesterday, I spoke a little bit about the stigma of it. And today, as I was listening to the video, uh, the elder, and I can't get her name, I wanna see if she has more work, so I can almost guarantee she does have more work. And uh, I'll show you her face right now. This is the, if anybody knows the name of this lecturer, feel free to share. Because I know she's so spirited. I'm like, I know she has to have more work. Let me share my screen real quick so you can see her. We can, we can tap the collective, uh, the collective knowledge so that we can get further. That's kind of what it's talking about. If anybody knows the name of this lecture, I'm listening to her in this, Why is Haiti so poor? Um, let me just give you a touch of, of, I don't even know if it plays on your side. You are me and I am you. I must love and protect you. And for our children, we must put our best forward. That's why it's important for history to find the great things that our people did in the past and put that in front of our children so they have an image of great black women, great black men, so they can aspire to be. Not constantly put in front of them the Duvaliers and the Mobutus. Those are the white man's trash. He can keep them, put them in his own history books. Now, if anybody knows the name of this lecturer, Please, if you haven't watched this video, uh, feel free to watch it. I put it in the box. Uh, we're going to talk about today because she was speaking about the first or the second draft of the institution, uh, the, sorry, the constitution within Haiti. And I thought that would be great to read for the Lev Project. Like she said, we need to put forward some of the things that have gone forth and analyze. So again, it's in the box. I'm going to read it for you right now. I'm going to share my screen. As I read this, not sure how many people have read the 1805 Constitution of Haiti, but when she was dropping some of the stuff that was in it, I was like, yo, hold up. Let's read this collectively. 
All right, you so you ready for this? This is this is Amuna trying to get back her bearings. And I definitely, you see, we get strength from one another. And I definitely got some strength from this elder here, as a matter of fact. So again, uh, welcome. This is Amuna Yeswa El Solanamis 101, uh, the Lev Project. So this is the 1805 Constitution of Haiti. And again, it has changed many times since then. But when the actual Haitian Revolution went down, this is what their constitution was. Second Constitution of Haiti, May 20th, 1805. It says in the preface, the document below was printed in the New York Evening Post, July the 15th, 1805. This is going to give us some understanding of why the, the campaign, the propaganda, as long as well as other things, economic, uh, all of the campaign has gone against Haiti in the way it has. It was transcribed into the version below by Bob Corbett on April 4th, 1999. I did not, this is the person of the, um, and this is Webster, faculty, webster.edu. This is the person saying, I did not translate it, only transcribed. It was printed in 1805 in English. There is no mention in the newspaper who translated it, but given that Henry Christopher was involved in the publication and that he had a strong liking of English, perhaps he is responsible. Unless American English has changed in this regard, I suspect a British translator given the use of the word color. And again, we know, or we, if we don't know, you could tell whether or not it's British and English because British usually uses a U. And I find myself spelling U, Jamaica system, different systems that's on British. They will use U, uh, America drops the U in words like color and honor in the document. It is not the complex constitution, but close. Articles 40 and 44 through 44 are absent. So we'll probably have to look for those at another time. The document mentions that the, these are interior regulations respecting the minister. Otherwise, it is all here. I have followed the published document in all capitalized and grammar and noted all, a few spelling oddities. The constitution, Haiti second was prom promulgated on May the 20th, 1805. Them time there. I'm sorry, in America, America is still in slavery. Um, South America is still in slavery. Again, for those who don't know, uh, Haiti, uh, IT was the first to achieve independence in the West. It says the reader should note that th at this time, the entire island of Hispaniola was under the rule of IT, which is Dominica Republic and um, Haiti, it split thereafter. Thus, the mention of islands that are today part of the Dominican Republic, the original newspaper library of Bob Carbert. So here we go. Constitution of IT, and that's how they usually say IT. It says, we, H. Christopher, Clarv, and if I, sorry, if you're Haitian or if you're, and I'm messing up the names, please familiar with me. Clarvus, Clarvux, Vernat, Cabarat, Pension, Geffard, Toussaint, I know how to say that, Brave, Raphael, Romain, Lalondridi, Copiox, Magni, Dout, Kunj, Maglio, Ambrose, Yayou, Jean-Louis, Francios, Guerin, Mer, Merouv, I believe, Fervo, Bavlias, and Martiel Bessy. Okay, as well in our name as in of the people of IT who have legally constituted us faithful organs and interpreters of their will in presence of the supreme being before whom all mankind are equal and who scattered so many species of creature, sorry, creatures on the surface of the earth for the purpose of manifesting his glory and his power by the diversity of his works. In the presence of all nature by whom we have been so unjustly and for so long a time considered as outcast children. Do declare that the tenor of the present condition is the free, spontaneous, and invariable expression of our hearts and the general will of our constituents. And we submit it to the sanction of H.M., the emperor, Jacques Dessalines, our deliverer, to receive its speedy and entire execution. Primary declaration. By the way, I haven't read it, um, so this is my first time reading it. I just heard her giving some of the things that was in it, and I said I gotta read it. So this is where we're doing. Art one. The people inhabiting the island, formerly known as Santo Domingo, hereby agree to form themselves into a free state sovereign and independent of any other power in the universe under the name of the empire of IT. Two, slavery is forever abolished. Three, 
the citizens of IT are brothers at home. Equality in the eyes of the law is uncontestable, sorry, uncontestably acknowledged, and there cannot exist any titles, advantages, or privileges other than those necessarily resulting from the consideration and reward of services rendered to liberty and independence. Four. The law is the same to all, whether it punishes or whether it protects. Five, the law has no retroactive effect. Six, property is sacred. Its violation shall be served, severely prosecuted. Seven, the quality of citizen of Haiti is lost by immigration and naturalization in foreign countries and condemnation to corporal or disgrace punishments. The fist cast, sorry, the fist case carries with it the punishment of death and confiscation of property. Eight, the quality of citizen is suspended in consequence of bankruptcies and failures. Nine, no person is worth of being a Haitian who is not a good father, good son, a good husband, and especially a good soldier. 10, fathers and mothers are not permitted to disinherit their children. 11, every citizen must possess a mechanic art. 12, no white man of whatever nation he may be shall put his foot on this territory with the title of master or proprietor, neither shall he in future acquire any property therein. That's what made me have to say, let me find out what they have put in this constitution. So in 12, it says no white man of whatever nation he may be shall put his foot on this territory with the title of master or proprietor, neither shall he in future acquire any property therein. 13. The preceding article cannot in the smallest degree affect white women who have been naturalized Haitians or Haitians by government, nor does it extend to children already born or that may be born of the said woman. The Germans and Polanders naturalized by government are also comprised in the dispositions of the present article. 14, all exception of color among the children of one and the same family of whom the chief magistrate is the father being necessary to cease the Haitians shall henceforward be known only by the generic application or sorry appellations of blacks of the empire because there was a lot of mixing for those who are not familiar with the history of Haiti and I just know a little bit so if you do know a lot more please feel free to share there were a lot of the Creole class where there was the mix because the French, especially you see a lot of Haitians came over to Louisiana um, when the whole thing went down with Haiti and uh, the French, they had a thing of, of mixing. And so there were a lot of mixed children and, and uh, article 13 seems to be addressing that. It says the empire of IT is one and indivisible. Its territory is distributed into six military divisions. 16, each military division shall be commanded by a general of division. 17, these generals of division shall be independent of one another and shall correspond direct with the emperor or with the general in chief appointed by his majesty. 18, the following islands are integral parts of the empire, viz. Samana, La Tortu, La Gonave, Les Camiens, I guess that's Cayman, I'm not sure, La Sano, La Isles Avachi, and other adjacent islands. I understand this was the first quote black government or um, free country in the West. And to understand what that meant to the system is to take a look at history and really understand what, what we're reading really meant in this space and time. When, when, you know, it was still kicking hard in America and South and the rest of the Caribbean. Of the government, the government of IT is entrusted to a first magistrate who assumes the title of emperor and commander in chief of the army. 20, the people acknowledge for emperor and commander in chief of the army, Jacques Dessalines, the avenger, <laughs> his name is the avenger and the deliverer of his fellow citizens. The title of majesty is conferred upon him as well as upon his august spouse, the empress. 21, the person of their majesties are sacred and in inviolable. 22, the state will appropriate a fixed annual allowance to her majesty, the empress which she will continue to enjoy even after the decease of the emperor as Princess Doaga. 23, the crown is elective, not hereditary. 24, there shall be assigned by the state an annual income to the children acknowledged by his majesty, the emperor. They're setting up a kingdom in the isles right about now. 
This is 1805. 25, the male child acknowledged by, and they had the right to do so because they were sovereign. They got their sovereignty, they won their sovereignty through the Haitian Revolution um, from France. So they were sovereign. It says, the male children acknowledged by the emperor shall be obliged in the same manner as other citizens to pass successfully from grade to grade, with this only difference that the entrance into service shall begin at the fourth demi by grade from the period of their birth. 26, the emperor designates in the manner he may judge expedient the person who is to be his successor either before or after his death. 27, a suitable provision shall be made by the state to the, that successor from the moment of his accession to the throne. 28, the emperor and his successor shall in no case and under no pretext whatsoever have the right of attacking to, to their persons any particular or privileged body, whether as guards of honor or under any other denomination. 29, every successor deviating from the dispositions of the preceding article or from the principles consecrated in the present constitution shall be considered and declared in a state of warfare against the society. In such a case, the counselors of state will assemble in order to pronounce his removal and to choose one among themselves who shall be judged the most worthy of replacing him. And if it should happen that the said successor opposed the execution of this measure, authorized by law, the generals, counselors of state shall appeal to the people and the army who will immediately give their whole strength and assistance to maintain liberty. Like, yo, you, you act up, you know what I'm saying? We coming for you. Don't think that you ruling and nobody won't roll on you. 30, the emperor makes seals and promulgates the laws, appoints and revokes at will the ministers, the general in chief for army, the counselor of state, the generals and other agents of the empire, the sea officers, the members of local administrations, the commissionaries of government near the tribunals, the judges and other public functionaries. And this is this is coming from people who people said you were slaves, you was nothing because remember all of the people who dropped off came from different places and these are just those who collectively were in Haiti. And how do you straight out of quote slavery um, who are supposed to be dumb and slow, put together, you know, okay, straight out of slavery, boom, this is our constitution, let's move on it. Uh, and of course, as we know, history bears out, there was there was uh, retaliation from the powers that be to make sure that this did not come to fruition. It says, 31, the emperor directs the receipts and expenditures of the state, surveys of the mint, of which he alone orders the emissions and fight, fixes the weights and of the model. And Santo Domingo was a place where one of the first, when they talk about the um, colonization of the Western world, it was the richest island. And when we go begin to look, because I wanted to do, uh, not too, so I wanted to do a Lado Equiano um, biography coming up, but you have to look at the history of Santo Domingo. They were rich. There was gold, there was resources. Um, the island had, dough okay and so this was one of the richest outposts uh of these european powers at that time as they are taking out all of the resources out of the island so let me continue to him alone 32 is preserved the right of pe making peace or war to maintain political intercourse and to form treaties 33 he provides for the interior safety and for the defense of the state and distributes at pleasure the sea and land forces 34 in case so they would be a player in the game. They would be in the conversation amongst the European powers that, and they did not want that. 34, in the case of conspiracies manifesting themselves against the safety of the state, against the constitution or against his person, the emperor shall cause the authors or compliances to be arrested and tried before a special council. 35, his majesty has alone the right to absorb a criminal and commute his punishment. 36, the emperor shall never form an enterprise with the views of making conquests, nor to disturb the police and interior administration of foreign colonies. Like, don't just run up in people's stuff like the Europeans did. Like, don't, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? You can't make enterprise of other people's land and rights to their own land the same way you wouldn't want someone to do it to yours. It says here, every 37, every public act shall be made in these terms. The emperor first of IT and commander in chief of the army by the grace of GOD and the constitution law of the state. Uh, of the council of state 38, the general of division and brigade are of the right members of the council of state and they compose it. 
of the ministers, 39, there shall be in the emperor two ministers and secretary of state. The ministers of finance have the department of the interior and the ministers of war have the marine department. Again, like they said in the preface, 40 through 44, interior regulations respecting the ministry, that's not there. Of the tribunals, no one can interfere with the right with ever individual has of being judged amicably by arbitrators of his own choosing, whose decision shall be acknowledged legal. 46, there shall be a justice of peace in each commune. Any suit amounting to more than $100 shall not come without his cognizance. And when the parties cannot conciliate themselves at this tribunal, they may appeal to the tribunals of their respective districts. 37, let me make sure everybody's good here. Everybody seems to be good. 37. Hold on, let me. Is, yeah, okay, I'm being heard. 30, no, I'm not at 37, I'm at 47. There shall be six tribunals established in their cities hereafter, viz. at St. Mark, at the Cape, at Port-au-Prince, Os Chaos, Lantavus, and Port de Pais, or Pikes. The emperor determines their organization, their number, their competence, and their ter and the territory forming the district of each. The tribunals take cognizance of all affairs purely civil. 48. Military crimes are submitted to special counsels and to particular forms of judgment. Particular laws shall be made for the national transaction and respecting civil officers of the state of worship. The law admits of no predominant religion. The freedom of worship is tolerated. 52, the state does not provide for the maintenance of any religious institution nor or, or any minister. Of the administration, 53, there shall be in each military division a, prime, a principal administration whose organization and inspections belong essentially to the minister of finance. For those who just join us right now, like I said, yesterday was the international remembrance of the slave trade and abolition. Uh, they used the 23rd of March, Haiti, the beginning of the Haitian rebellion to mark this date. This is what they did. And that led me to share yesterday um, a little bit of history of Haiti. Sometimes we don't know when we see the word or the name Haiti comes up, it has a very bad stigma towards it. That was not done by accident because if you think about it, it's the same people on the, the islands. It's all mixed up. People from different places, the Ivory Coast, the Gold Coast, Guinea, all of these places were dispersed throughout the island. So why does Haiti alone get this so-called, quote, bad name? Why wasn't it Barbados? Why wasn't it Brazil? Why wasn't it, even though Jamaica is second runner up for the bad name, why wasn't it Cuba? And the reason was they did not want, they tried to quell the rebellious thought. They tried to requell the overthrowing of the governmental system because many people tried, as the um, professor in, in the documentary I shared, many people tried. There were many rebellions, but Haiti was the only one who was successful in successfully running out of town. Um, the Maroons on a smaller uh, scale were successful in Jamaica. Um, they were in the islands and they, they were granted sovereignty. Not everybody were granted sovereignty, but in Jamaica, the Maroons were granted sovereignty and they, they, they were uh, sovereign, but Haiti was successful as an island. And that's my New York coming out, an island who, um, and a community of people who threw off the French. The French was like, you know what, I'm good. And, if, and there was a whole bad dealings and, and we'll go into that at, a, at another time, but this still plays into the left project as it relates to us understanding the history. So I'm gonna continue, general, general dispositions. Act one, the emperor and empress belong, the choice belong, the choice, the salary, the maintenance of the persons composing their court. Two, after the decease of the reigning emperor, when a revision of constitution shall have judged necessary, the council of state will assemble for that purpose and shall be presided by the oldest member. Three, the crimes of high treason, the lapidations of ministers and generals shall be judged by a special council called and presided by the emperor. Four, the armed force is essentially obedient. No armed body can deliberate. Five, no person shall be judged without having legally heard in his defense. Six, the house of every citizen is in viable asylum. Seven, it cannot be entered but in the case of conflagration, inundation, reclamation from the interior or by virtue of an order from the emperor or from any other authority legally constituted. 
8. He deserves death who gives it to his fellow. So this is some eye for eye stuff. You understand what I'm saying? Um, yeah. 9. Every judge to which the pain of death or corporal punishment is annexed shall not be carried into execution until it has been confirmed by the emperor. 10. Theft shall be punished according to the circumstances which may have preceded, accompanied, or followed it. 11. Every stranger inhabiting the territory of Haiti shall be equally with the Haitians, subject to correctional and criminal laws of the country. 12. All property which formerly belonged to any white Frenchman is unconstant, con, sorry, incontestably and of right confiscated to the use of the state. So they was taken back ah, their former enslavers land. It says 13. Every Haitian or Haitian who have purchased property from a white Frenchman may have paid part of the purchase money stipulated in the act of sale shall be responsible to the dominion of the state for the remainder of the sum due because now it went back to the state marriage is an act purely civil and authorized by the government the law authorizes divorce in all cases which shall have previously provided for and determined 16 so they go in the civil law they were into economic law um they're going into governmental law this is what sovereignty looks like and the right to be so because they had land um, it says a particular law shall be issued concerning children born out of wedlock. 17, respect for chiefs, subordination, and discipline are rigorously necessary. 18, a penal code shall be punished, uh, sorry, published and severely observed. 19, within each military division, a public school shall be established for the instruction of youth. 20, this is Haiti now that we're looking at. This is Haiti in 1805. Where are we now? 1805, 1905, 2005. Where uh, some 215 years later, Haiti was at the, Jamaica didn't get independence. Jamaica's only celebrating 50 something years of independence. Um, the other islands came way, way after, as well as South America came way, way after. Haiti is 215 years. They are the forerunners for this conversation. The national color shall be black and red. And that's interesting because it's, I don't know how it got to blue and red and white now but the national colors are supposed to be black and red. 21, agriculture at, as it is the first, the most noble and the most useful of all arts shall be honored and protected. And today I was looking at a documentary or a few days ago um, where a lot of the food now is being imported and Haiti is, the farmers are not producing to supply for the, for the country. And like other Caribbean islands, the food is being imported at uh, absorbable rates and people cannot afford to eat. 22, but at this point in, in 21, they understood agriculture is the most noble and the most useful of all arts. 22, commerce, the second source of prosperity of states, will not admit of any impediment, impediment, sorry. It ought to be favored and specially protected. 23, in each military division, a tribunal of commerce shall be found, whose members shall be chosen by the emperor from the class of merchants. 24, good faith and integrity in commercial operations shall be religiously maintained. 25, the government assures safety and protections of neutral nations and friends who may be desirous of establishing a commercial intercourse with this island, they confirming to the regulations and customs of the, uh, the country. 26, the counting houses and merchandise of foreigners shall be under the safeguard and guarantee of the state. So we're not going to rob you if you come to do business here. Bring that. There shall be national festivals for celebrating independence the birth of the emperor and his august spouse, that of agriculture and constitution. So that they, again, this is them. Hold on one second. It says here, where are we? 28, at the first firing of the alarm gun, the cities will disappear and nation rise. We, the undersigned, place under the safeguard in the magistrates, fathers and mothers of families, the citizens, the arm of the explic explicit and solemn covenant of sacred rights of man and the duties of the citizens. We recommend it to our, our successors and present it to the friends of liberty, to the philanthropists of all countries as a signal pledge of the divine bounty who in the course of this immortal decrees has given us an opportunity of breaking our fetters and of constituting ourselves a people free, civilized and independent. And it says signed H. Christopher as before, having seen the present constitution, we 
Jacques Dessaline, Emperor the First of IT and Commander of Chief of the Army, by the grace of GOD and the Constitution Law of the State, accept it wholly and sanction it that it may receive with the least possible delay its full and entire execution through the whole of our empire. And we swear to maintain it and to cause it to be observed in its integrity to the last breath of our life. At the Imperial Palace of Dessalines, the 20th of May, 1805, second year of independence of IT and of our reign, the first. And he signs his name. I don't know anybody who has heard of this before who has read through it in its entirety. Again, it has been changed many times and we could definitely take a look, but uh, I say that to say this plays into it because oftentimes what I've been concentrating on in the beginning, these first eight months was um, American slavery uh, as it relates to the narratives that are coming out of America, but the body of narratives, as we know, it's the diaspora in the West. And sometimes we get lost in this conversation because we just concentrate wholly on American slavery, which by far, because of the methods that were employed and because England um, coming in so late in the game, they went hard, you understand? But um, again, I think that was just a little boost and it is connected to yesterday's conversation and we need to continue to have the conversation as we go into it and not just get lost in um the 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 monotony of it and to just put that also in our bag and in our little bag of uh understanding how this whole picture looks a lot of times in this day and age a lot of people are speaking about sovereignty and i i, I'm, I like to be a student of and i'm a baby student <laughs> of history because what we are speaking about in theory was in practice and we have to understand if we want to look at what happened to a sovereign state who had the right to be sovereign because for sovereignty you have to have some things in play and they had those things they had the people they had the land they had the constitution but still because they were outnumbered as it relates to the powers that be and those who did not want to see imagine haiti or it as a sovereign state in that space and time so when we look at the Louisiana Purchase, when the French had to sell, when we look at America claiming that, that position, when we look at a lot of Haitians coming to Louisiana and we begin to see a lot of culture, a lot of Creoles and the culture being transferred um, and the, the resources and the economy of Haiti being sucked, when we look at our Haitian brothers and sisters today, we look more with understanding because we, we want to talk about, um, you know, there are all the things that are in play. Let me just say that. Uh, I'll look to see if I can see the third edition because the elder, and you can definitely look at the um, the thing that I shared, the elder spoke of it being many times over, even up to 1915 and beyond, many times over, done over. So it's good to compare this. This is the second one. Um, it's good to compare how it has transitioned and how they actually got into this space and that if you do not have certain things in play, um, and again, like I said, they were a country, uh, a group of people who endured certain things collectively and had a mind and a thought to do something, but we cannot be ignorant of what's happening in and around us. So I wanted to share that. That is the left project for today. Again, like I said, I wanted to touch on Aladu Equiano. We're going to have to put John Blackford, uh, take, give him a pause for a minute uh, so that we could get back into, I could get my, my juices flowing, you know, get back into the groove of things and uh, continue. If anybody wants to read, David Lance, greetings and welcome. This is a great reading and conversation. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us. Like I said, if you missed yesterday's video, I put it in the box because it's in connection with uh, yesterday's conversation as well. If you're not familiar with HR 40 and John Kanye's, I'm gonna do, I'm gonna read that as well, because again, it has to do with, I think, you know what? I think I'm going to read that next because I want to read certain things. Sometimes we speak in the hypothetical. What if, if only we, why can't we? And we are uh, oftentimes as a collective, not the scholarly level, because sometimes this is why I do the left project, because what I found is that there's a gap between the scholars 
and the lay people, so to say. And what happens is the scholars come, they read all the books, uh, they, and then they come and just disseminate small pieces of information. And what happens when those scholars are no longer there, again, the people are lost once again. Oh, thank you so much, David. The people are lost. And so even though it may be time consuming, even though it's some for some people it's like, ah, let her get to the meat and potatoes. No, I can't chew your food for you. We Each of us, if we're having a meal, what we're doing is breaking bread together. I can't chew your food for you. You can't chew my food for me. We all need to know this information collectively. And I know it's some pedestrian for some. It's a, you know, story time. It's a, you know, kindergartenist. But this is where you get where the, everybody is empowered because everybody knows. Yeah, I know about that. I heard it in its entirety because your ear might be tuned to something different than mine. Baby, come here. Do you understand what I'm saying? And so this is why I take the time to read through it so that we can experience it together. Um, so that was 1805 Constitution of IT. If you want to read it over again, I put it in the box. Next, I'm going to come, and, and before we get back into some longer narratives, I want to just boost our morale a little bit and read some short, read some short uh, things that's really going to help us with what's going on when we're having the conversation. It's not that the people didn't have the will. It's not that the people didn't have the ability. There are certain things that are in play. Even, you see, Marcus Garvey comes 100 years later. Marcus is still talking the same stuff. The only, Marcus didn't even have the land. Marcus is talking the same conversation of these elders that were in IT at the time talking about sovereignty. And Mar they, Marcus was a step behind them because in the respect of having the practicality to actually bring this to pass. But as we saw in the case of IT, we saw in the case of Marcus Garvey, there's something else that we cannot afford to continue not to look, take a look at in its entirety as it relates to this conversation so uh tomorrow a lot of people don't know most are willing that's a great point we're trying to achieve liberation we should look to the nations like it and cuba who have done so correct uh to the right person kid what's up what's up sister angel um yes we have to look at and this is the elder let me see if i could get that for you because she spoke about that and this lady I, if anybody knows her what name please about? wait hold okay. on okay Today, we have a large drug population. Wait a minute. If I could find, or well, I'll set another day to get the a exact point. Imprisonment. The, the exact point on this documentary that I want to share with you. The whole thing is excellent, but there's a point that she was speaking about the history, and I've been saying, and I continue to say it, because nothing is new under the sun. We have to stop acting like we have great, great, brand new ideas, when the reality is we have to find out who had the idea, who actually did it, what was the problem with it? Why didn't it succeed? This is having a holistic view of what have come before us. So don't, we don't continue to make the same exact mistakes or um, be short-sighted in the same exact area. So tomorrow, uh, most I will, and I will, what's tomorrow, Thursday? Thursday, yeah. I will try to read, if not tomorrow, I will put up when, when the next time I'm going to read. Another thing I wanted to bring to the forefront as it related to slavery is, uh, um, John Conyers has a bill, has had a bill for 20 years. He has uh, promote, presented it to Congress. It has not passed the floor. It's the dealing with America, um, HR 40, dealing with reparations. And a lot of times, you know, we don't read these things. So I'm going to read that bill because he's talking about what he's proposing as it relates to taking a look at the institution of slavery in America. So with that, I want to thank everybody for tuning in. Amuna's back. <laughs> I had to take a little break. I, you know, I had to drink. I don't drink Gatorade, but I had to drink my power, my power up. You know, I had to chill out for a minute, get my mind right, uh, diffuse some of this heavy, heavy, heavy information that we're taking in over these last eight months continuously. It's not like, oh yeah, let's go hard. You know, for for a month we've been going hard for eight months, and it's a lot to process. And so. That's what I've been doing. I've been processing. So, uh, and I hope you've been processing as well. I hope you've been continuing on. If you don't know what I'm talking about and you're like new to the Lev Project, you can go all the way back to the beginning. We are reading the narratives of slave. We are reading our, our ancestors. We are reading uh, the narratives of those who have enslaved our ancestors. And in this case, we're reading what happened after the, after the abolition. Actually, they didn't ab abolish slavery. Haiti took it back. 
They took back their land. They took back their autonomy. They took back their freedom. But today, as we see, they're paying for it in the sense of they were forced to pay reparations. But if you can imagine that, they were forced to pay reparations by France. France actually said, either you're going to pay us or we're going to invade you. And according to the story that I'm hearing, uh, the forces, the troops were so um, worn out from fighting for their freedom and pushing back the French out of the land, they just decided to pay, which was equivalent of, I forget how many billion dollars in today's time. So if you understand, if you are next time you ask what happened to Haiti, that's a whole nother research in and of itself. But once again, uh, thank everybody for tuning in. Check all the links in the box. Support the, 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 uh, the conversation here. If you like the show, I got the link in the box as well. This is what I've been doing on my off time, everybody. I've been just going into my needlework, my crochet. Um, some people trying to pull me back into sewing. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, that's the stuff I do to just, uh, again, process all that we're having. So feel free to share what you do. Uh, are you an artist? Or do you make, you know, songs? Do you make poetry? Feel free to share. This is a space where not only are we looking at what our forefathers have done, we're also helping one another in the healing process by sharing what helps us get through. And, I, and a lot of times we self-medicate. And so I'm going to do solenomics for just a second. We self-medicate. And so what gets us through is alcohol. You know, some people smoke, some people drink, some people do uh, addictive behavior like, um, no, go that way. Some people have behaviors such as uh, gambling, such as things that are uh, destructive. You understand? Because there's this energy that's balled up in you and you're, you're all tense and you don't know what to do. And some people just consume a lot of information, but they don't have the, the desire or the will, the power to actually put it or implement it in your life. Some people become obsessive because we're dealing with an oppressive system, an oppressive regime um, that has been over us for 400 plus years. And so you have to find a positive way to channel that information, that energy to empower yourself and those around you. And so again, depending on your personality type, depending on your skills, because some skills you can learn, like needlework. Uh, I learned that it's actually, I've always, I've known how to do it since I was younger, but I've learned in recent times that it's actually therapeutic. You understand what I say? It actually helps to, um, with depression, if those people are depressed, it, it is, uh, and I said it yesterday, it's meditative in nature. Um, also, I can't get it right now, it's clay, ceramics. If you have an opportunity to do ceramics, I promise you, I used to do it when I was in college. When you get that block of clay, and at first it's really hard to work, and our foreparents work, that's the earth. And what it does is it helps to ground negative energy. So when you get in touch with the clay, which at first when you get it, it's real hard, and you have to work it, and you have to work it, and then you make it into something beautiful, that's therapeutic. So if you have the opportunity to do ceramics, if you have the opportunity to paint, if you have the opportunity to do needlework, which is not that expensive, it's a ball and, and some wool and a crochet needle. It's like this right here. See, I got mine nearby. You're like, y'all stressing me and I just go. But you know what I'm saying? If you paint, if you draw, share it. Because you never know that you may inspire someone else and um, inspire that creativity within them. So this is why I share oftentimes. And... Um, you put into the art. Well, David, next time you come, feel free to share your art with us. And um, anybody else who's out there, share your art. Because what, it's one thing to, to create it, and it's another thing to share it. The reason why we have so much beautiful music and artwork is because people shared it. Imagine if Michael Jackson never shared his music. Imagine if, imagine if Tina Turner, imagine if Marvin Gaye just sung to himself, and he never shared it. You would never have heard it. You would have never experienced it. And that's the part of life that we need to get back to. It's not just about making money and doing this. It's about sharing our energy with one another, our healing vibration with one another. It's about building up one another, inspiring one another, and helping one another to be great. So with that said, I know I came in the afternoon, which I usually don't do, but today I have Take Time to Heal, so I wanted to get this in. With that said, my name is Imuna Yisrael. This has been Solonomics 101. All of the links are in the box. Please read it over at your own leisure. This is the Haitian constitution. This is the constitution of a sovereign nation. And again, as we go along, let's take a look at what happened with this conversation. All of the things is in the box. Once again, thank everybody for tuning in. And I pray everybody have a blessed day. Um, shalom.